saying robots should be slaves. So it's possible that you could upload, but they're not going to be exactly the same. Who would rather spend time on their smartphone than interact with somebody sitting right next to them? And there may even be new emotions that we don't have as humans that robots have. Je profite d'un après-midi d'automne avec mon robot InMove pour voir, pour boire un café à la terrasse. 로봇의 이름은 C3P1. 인공지능 기술로 8개국 언어를 구사하는 로봇입니다. 앞으로 이 로봇은 하기 싫고 귀찮은 일을 대신해 줄 개인 비서가 될 거랍니다. 이 로봇은 모두 집에서 만들었습니다. 일종의 간의 수공품인 셈이죠. 로봇을 만드는 과정은 크게 세 단계로 나눌 수 있습니다. 먼저 필요한 부품을 디자인합니다. 그리고 3D 프린팅 기술로 부품을 만들어내죠. 만들어낸 부품을 회로에 끼워 넣고 마지막으로 모든 것을 조립합니다. 부품부터 하나하나 만들어 로봇을 완성했다면 좀 남다른 애정이 있지 않을까 싶은데요. 그렇지만은 않은가 봅니다. Non, je n'ai pas de ressentiment auprès de mon robot. Ça reste, ça reste une machine. Je vois la petite anecdote. Moi, mon robot a pris feu une fois. Euh, bah, il est parti à la poubelle. Je l'ai reconstruit. Voilà. <rire> que penses-tu des hommes Veux-tu Je ne suis robot expérimental. The big difference between robots and human beings is going to be that you can turn a robot off, take it apart, put it back together, turn it on, no harm. You can back up a robot. You can't back up a human being. Robots being dismembered isn't death, wouldn't be death. And so robots do not share human vulnerability. That's already true. My friend and sometime colleague, Joanna Bryson, has written a brave paper saying robots should be slaves. Nothing wrong with slaves if they're not agents. Then you can take them apart, throw them away, buy them, sell them. Use them without doing any harm. But it's important that they be made so that that's clear what they are. And if we do that, I think we're we're fine. It's when we take on the. Uh, the misguided role of creating an artificial conscious agent that could be responsible, that could feel pain, that could feel anxiety, that could worry about its own death. Possible to do, but not wise. However, the robot has been changed by the world. 전쟁에 사용된 로봇이 그중 하나입니다. 군인들은 로봇을 특별하게 대했습니다. 누군가는 우리 팀의 15번째 요원이라 말했고 또 누군가는 
엘리라는 이름을 붙여주기도 했습니다. 기계란 건 알고 있지만 매일 같이 지내며 함께 훈련하다 보니 동지애가 싹틉니다. 물론 그 로봇들은 인간이나 동물과는 다르게 생겼습니다. 굳이 비교하자면 탱크와 비슷하죠. 군인들은 폭발물을 제거하는 임무를 수행하다 로봇이 망가지면 큰 상실감을 느꼈습니다. 장례를 치러주기도 했다는군요. 단순한 사물을 잃었을 때와는 큰 차이입니다. 특별한 상호작용을 하지 않았더라도 사람들은 기계의 연민을 느낍니다. 한 회사의 로봇 테스트 장면입니다. 여러분은 이 영상을 보고 어떤 생각이 드시나요? Human beings are equipped by their genetic background, just as living mammals, to be not just sociable, but to crave familiar companionship and to endow the familiar with potent features. Even when the objects are not remotely like agents, some people develop a very strong personal attachment to an automobile or a or a motorcycle. I confess to having separation anxiety from a sailboat that I had to sell recently, and I I, I love that sailboat. Um, many people love their boats. Boats aren't conscious; they're not agents. But when we've been through a lot of experiences together, uh, we we sort of see them as companions, as embodying important parts of our own life history. That's going to happen, of course, with robots, or for that matter, with uh, with laptops or smartphones. Doesn't have to have a humanoid body. Um, is this a good thing or a bad thing? I don't think it's clear one way or the other. It's a natural thing. So there are some videos on the internet of people who are testing the Boston Dynamic robots, which are in the shape of animals, four-legged animals like a dog or a horse. And to show how stable they were, they were trying to kick them over. And when you look at them, we project onto them, and it looks like they're being tortured. And part of that is, is because uh, their four-leggedness reminds us of animals, and so we kind of project onto them that they're animals, and we have some of that emotion. Um, but there's there's one sense in which that's really very valid in the sense that I think we are not we're going to be very surprised by how emotional we will be with robots and uh, AIs. In part because we are going to program into them emotion. We are going to give them emotion. Those uh, Boston Dynamics don't have any emotion, but if they actually were to those. Animals were to cry or scream when they were kicked. We would really have an emotional reaction. This is going to be a real thing where 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 people will have very strong emotional relationships with these, and they're true emotions. They're not fake emotions. They're true emotions, and so. Um, There'll be issues. There'll be problems with that. There's good news and bad news, right? There's good things and bad things about that. But that's going to be part of the landscape. And again, there'll be different kinds of relationships depending on the AI or the robot. Some will be deeper. Some will be shallower. And there might even be new emotions 
that we don't have as humans that robots have. So we should expect there to be a full range of emotional relationships with AIs and robots. 사람들은 지금처럼 기술이 발달하면 인간의 미래가 달라질까 걱정합니다. 그렇다고 기술의 발달을 피할 수도 없는 일이죠. 그렇다면 우리는 우리를 닮은 이 존재와 어떤 관계를 맺어야 할까요? For robots to become artificial friends. Will they be as good as real friends? It's, um, it depends on your standards. Um, I think that it might turn out that for some people, robot friends would make their life endurable in a way that nothing else could. That would be something worth doing. The job of being the companion of, an, of a failing, fading Alzheimer's patient is you don't want that to be your life work. You don't want to be that. That's, that's not a good life for a healthy person. If we can put a robot substitute in that role, that's, that's a good use of a robot. As a, as a surrogate companion. It will be by such apparently benign steps that we may well create these imitation, shallow imitation caricature agents and put them in place. In fact, I suppose the, the, the IBO robots and the and the other sort of robotic toys are already uh, exemplars of that. And it's hard to complain about them when they seem to give comfort and enrich the lives of lonely people. We should keep embracing technology. Um, when the new technology, when we invent new things, we have to use them in order to uh, discover what they're good for, what they're bad for. We can't really decide about technology just by thinking about it. We have to use them. Technologies don't reveal their nature until we use them. So when new technologies come along, we need to use them to figure out what they're good for, what they're bad for, to change our course, to try and steer them. If we try to prohibit them, we don't get to steer. We don't get to influence them. So we have to embrace the new technologies as much as possible. Respect is not something in the future. Respect is also something already present. And um, we have to respect it in the way that we respect an animal, right? You, you, you treat a dog or a horse in a respectful way. It's other. It's not like it's superior. It's not necessarily that it has to be smarter than us or more powerful. It just has. To, it, it demands its own respect. And so technology already should be respected. 미래는 이미 와 있다. 널리 퍼져 있지 않을 뿐이다. 미국의 SF 작가 윌리엄 깁슨의 말입니다. 스스로 판단해 길을 달리는 자동차. 사람들의 질문을 알아듣고 답하는 스피커. 오늘의 브리핑 시작합니다. 인간을 닮은 이 존재는 이미 우리 생활 속 곳곳에서 찾아볼 수 있게 되었습니다. 그리고 생각보다 빠른 속도로 퍼져나가고 있죠. 많은 전문가들은 인공지능이 삶의 풍경을 바꿀 거라 이야기합니다. 정확히 말하자면 인공지능과 사람이 함께 그려갈 풍경입니다. 늘 그렇듯 
기술은 사용하는 사람들의 몫이니까요. 여러분들이 상상하는 우리의 미래는 어떤 모습인가요?